Welcome, everybody, to another edition of The Word on Woodward. I'm Daniela Bruce alongside Art Regner. And joining us today, newest Red Wings goaltender, Vili Huso. Vili, thank you so much for taking the time to join us. I know you're all the way in Finland joining us right now. It's probably pretty pretty early there right now, right? Or is it late? I don't know. Uh, I always later, know. later. Yeah. Yeah, later. <laughs> it's it's uh, 8, 8 p.m. right now here, so. All right, we're talking to him at 1 p.m. Art, don't make fun of me, you know. <laughs> Well, then the Michigan State education shines through each and every interview we do, Daniela. Way to go. You're making your yeah, your, it. your alma mater proud, I'm sure of it. Yeah. I do. I do make them proud each and every day. But, Billy, we appreciate you taking the time to join us from all the way across the world. Let's get right into it. We'll talk a little bit about your new team. What are you looking forward to most about your new chapter with the Red Wings? Well, I'm really excited, first of all. And then... Uh... Young team, a lot of young guys, young players, and uh, uh, yeah, like I said, I'm really excited to come to Detroit and get things started. You know, Philly, what's interesting about you, you were going to be an unrestricted free agent. And, you know, Steve Eisenman, who is an extremely aggressive general manager, saw an opportunity, pounced on it. I mean, were you surprised that it didn't go to free agency or did you have an idea that the Blues were going to try to move you before you hit free agency? Everything happened pretty quick on that, that day. And uh, I got to know that I'm, I won't go back to St. Louis. And then uh, my agent called me and ha so, so said that I have a chance to go to Detroit. And uh, I think about it probably like three, five seconds and then... I was all in for that. So now, it only took you three to five seconds to decide you wanted to come to Detroit? I like to hear that. Yeah, pretty much. Like, it, it actually like happened, like I said, pretty quick. And uh, uh, I mean, I, I kind of knew it a little bit before, like there could be an option to come to Detroit. And uh, But yeah, it, it happened super fast. Yeah, you know, I'm kind of curious now. And, you know, we know from the Red Wings have had a very European flavor on their team for decades, and it's worked out very well. As a matter of fact, I would have, I'm making an assumption here that Detroit has probably had the most success with European born players who play in the National Hockey League. I mean, and, and I'm not going to go, there's a litany of guys, yet a lot of them are Swedish. They've had some Finnish players. Before you signed your three-year extension, I believe it was, three or four, I can't remember off the top of my head, but um, did you make a demand to Steve and say, listen, you got, okay, yeah, the Swedes are great, don't get me wrong, but let's get a couple of Finns in here too. I, I, I need some fellow countrymen. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I always follow Detroit a lot, and, um, and um, actually one of my, when we grow up, my teammate, we were good fr friends, and uh, he was a big Detroit fan, so I always kind of followed the Detroit as well, and uh, all those like Swedish guys and a couple of Russians as well. So, uh, yeah, I guess it was uh, put a couple of Finns in the team as well, and uh, it was nice that uh, Oli Matta came as well. So uh, we're gonna have two Finns on the team for sure, and then there's as well Yussi uh, Olkinuara. So. Uh, we have actually three guys in there. Oli Mata, fellow countryman. He was a new addition for the Red Wings this season. And then, of course, David Perron. And then Oscar Sundquist and Jake Wallman were also additions for the Red Wings last season at the trade deadline. So I'm wondering what your relationship is like with them. Obviously, all former Blues. Are you excited that you're going to have some familiarity when you come here to Detroit? Yeah, for sure. And I think it, it'll help me a lot, too, that I know a couple of guys already there. And, uh, and um uh, yeah, I, I'm a good friends with everyone, and um, especially with David. He helped me a lot when I came to NHL two years ago, and uh, uh, he was like, you know, like always helping. And if I needed anything, he was always there. So it's uh, it's nice to keep playing with him, and uh, and even Oscar and Jake and uh, Fab. So I know them from a long time. So. It's nice to have them at the same team. The last time we did a Word on Woodward episode, we talked to Alex Nadelkovich and we asked him about you and what he's looking forward to about kind of, you know, tag teaming the season, whether there's a clear number one or not. We won't know that until later in the season, but you guys could be a really great duo. What are you looking forward to about working with Alex and how much have you talked to him leading up to your time in Detroit? Well, um, he texted me right away after 
when uh, everything happened in the July and we, uh, we've been chatting a little bit after that as well and uh, yeah I'm looking forward to meet him first of all and then uh, only heard good things about him and how hard he works and uh, try to you know get every day like push push uh, each other and uh, try to you know win hockey games and um, try to be like a good, good teammate for him and you know uh, we are both young so uh, I, I think we can both share things and talk about a lot of goalie stuff. Today's NHL is almost forcing teams to have a two goalie system because it's just physically taxing position. I mean how how great is it that you have a guy that you can probably relate to. I would assume that your paths crossed uh, uh, in the AHL together when you were both uh, AHL goaltenders, but how great is it to have some sort of familiarity, have a guy who not only is going through what you're going through, but roughly the same age as you and pretty much has the same trajectory, same draft year, played in the AHL, um, you know, came on. And when you got the starting role, you guys were both extremely successful. I mean, there seems to be a parallel. And I guess what this is leading to this very long and involved question is that you and Alex Nadalkovic have been on a career arc. I mean, it, you, you are so you two were meant to share the net together. I think, am I, uh, am I looking at this way too, uh, uh, you know, with red and white glasses on here or something? Yeah. I mean, you never know what happens and uh i mean it's nice that we both got drafted the same year and uh it's been uh you know eight years since the draft so i i think we both have uh, learned a lot and uh and now it's nice to you know share things with him the goalie stuff like i said before and uh and uh but yeah it's um i'm excited to meet him and start to work with him you, you know, I, I can you just expound a little bit? I don't want you to give away trade secrets of the net or anything, but what is goalie stuff? I mean, you've mentioned it a couple times, and I know you, you know you've piqued our interest. I mean, can you at least give us a little insight of what goalie stuff is? Well, I guess it, it is what the goalies do on the you know the goalie crease, so trying to save the puck and uh, and then maybe sometimes even try to play the puck. So. Uh, that stuff. Uh, I mean, just like, you know, there is a lot of new stuff for goalies coming every year. And, you know, so uh, it's going to be nice to see and share things with him. All right, Billy, I wanted to ask you a little bit about your experience with the Blues and winning the Stanley Cup. You didn't play during that cup run, but you were able to be a part of that team and actually spend a day with the Stanley Cup. What were some of the things that you learned through that experience, even though you didn't get to man the net? Well, I think the biggest thing was like how, how close the team was and like, um, you know, how the older guys took care of the young guys and kind of lead the way and uh, on the ice and off the ice. So um, I think it was just a good group of guys that year and, uh, you know, everything. It's kind of a magical story how everything happened from the last place and then you go all the way and... Uh, uh, that just tells like anything can happen and uh, with the cute, good uh, team spirit, you know, um, you can do whatever. So a um, lot of good memories and uh, and uh, it was great to see it that close. And but like you said, I, I didn't play that year and it's still for for me. The big, big thing is that I want to win it and, you know, be a part of the team and play. So hopefully these next next years. So I would imagine then. Laura Brannigan's Gloria is probably not on your heavy rotation. Uh, do you do you listen to that song at all, or or no? No, I haven't heard it for a long time now. And if it comes from a radio, it always brings uh, good memories. You had some more playoff experience as well, too, Billy, where you actually did play, and that was in 2022 with the St. Louis Blues. Can you talk about your experience there, whether you think it was successful for you or not, what you learned from that, and what you think that's going to teach you moving forward with the Red Wings? Yeah, I, I think it was um, it was a tough playoffs for us, for sure, last year, and uh, uh, it's kind of a different game for a goalie when you jump in for the playoff game, and a lot of like up and downs, even during the game and after a win or you lose and uh, uh, it's just you need to have a good mindset and 
you need to be uh, mentally strong. So I think that's the biggest thing what I learned last year. Yeah, you know, we asked you about Alex Nadalkovich, but the Red Wings actually have made some changes in the front office as far as coaching goes. Derek Lalone, your new coach, uh, is also a former goaltender uh, for the Red Dragons of uh, State University of New York courtside. He played 41 games uh, for them. Uh, has he reached out to you? And is it kind of cool to have a head coach who also was a goaltender? Yeah, he uh, he reached out to me and uh, we talk. That's probably like a month ago and a uh, um, lot of new, new stuff for him too. So uh, it was kind of a, not a quick call, but like probably like 10 to 15 minutes. And uh, but yeah, it's um, I never meet him yet. So I'm looking forward for that. And uh, yeah, it's uh, funny that he uh, he used to be a goalie as well. Did he talk goaltending stuff to you then? I mean, did you were, 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 were you on that level? Like, you know, you you knew that you were talking to a fellow goaltender. Well, I I actually didn't know before you said it, so uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, I didn't know. Sorry, you learn something new every day. You learn something really, new I, every day. Like I learned my I'm, time zones today, so that you know that's good. Yeah, really, that that, that is good. Yeah, Europe's ahead of us. Okay. Right. <laughs> uh, but I did I did want to ask you, I feel like we ask every player that's new to Detroit this question. You said you're moving here next week, right? So you're going to be in Detroit. Have you ever had a Coney dog? Uh, nope. All right. That's one of the first things you have to do. It's a hot dog with chili on it. Hot dog? And mustard. Oh. Yeah. I think I think I, I did look stuff in, from Michigan, but I... I I forgot them already, but hopefully I get familiar with them when I get there. I'm kind of curious. We always ask skaters this question when they move to North America. And I know you've played in North America for a long time now, but was there what kind of an adjustment does a goalie make from a big ice surface to the smaller North American ice surface? And was there a bit of a, a you know, a, a learning curve for you? Yeah, I think there was. Um, uh, I mean, the... Ice is smaller in the U.S., so everything happens faster and quicker. And as a goalie, you need to be always ready, even the, if the puck is on the, you know, on the boards or behind the net. It might come quickly in front of the net, and you, there is no like free time for a goalie in the U.S. U.S. ice. So I think that was the biggest thing for me that I learned, and um, um, and then just how good good the guys are and. AHL, NHL, like they don't need much space to shoot the puck or even pass or whatever. So you need to always be uh, on your on your toes as a goalie. Well, Billy, thank you so much for taking the time to join us. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks for you guys. You're welcome. And we're really looking forward to having you in Detroit. And good luck next week with the move. <laughs> thank you. Can't wait to get to Detroit <laughs> and get things started. All right, a big thank you to all of you as well for tuning in to another edition of The Word on Woodward. We'll see you next time.